Okay guys, we got both hemispheres covered. Kiwi from the south, Scott from the north, for this edition, take four of Cafe U20s. Kia ora gang, from a beautiful rooftop coffee shop here in Perpignan. It's the Kiwi in Kilt, as we look forward to match day four, but also look back on match day three, alongside me, Rory Lawson and Rory, what did you make of match day three? Yeah, it was great to get involved in this year's Under 20s World Championship. And my goodness, the French stole all the headlines, didn't they? How good were they? Five first half tries went out to 36 0 lead against the junior Springboks. And it was just unbelievable. Everything stuck. They threw off loads, they took their opportunities, and the game was ultimately put to bed by half time. South Africa came back, which is what I liked. They showed a whole lot of determination that second half, but you're so right. Some of the players that really stood out, Yosef for me, Coville, their captain at halfback, also Carbonell, and how could you forget Roman Intermac? The other side, they'll be a real threat. And the Kiwis are their opponents in the semi final. It's a big, big task for this under 20s New Zealand side, but I watched them against Australia. They did what it took to get through. The Australians, energetic, combative. They brought in three of the guys from the Queensland Reds, but New Zealand did just enough to get over the line. And if there's going to be one bump in the road, that was maybe it for them in this tournament. Yeah, I don't agree with you. I think that uh, this is a New Zealand side that have only got two players back from last year. And so there's a lot of young players. They'll be better next year. And I think that as a young team that's coming through, they've got a few issues. You know, they should have put Australia to bed and they should have finished top qualifier by scoring four tries against Australia. They didn't do that. Hence the reason they're going to meet the hosts. And I think it's going to be a barnstormer. Come on, Willie. There's no New Zealand under-20 side that can't turn up in these uh, semi-finals and win the game. They'll turn over the hosts and they'll go on it to defend their title. Yeah, OK, but there were other standout performers also in round three. What caught your eye? Yeah, for me, England, Scotland. Obviously, I had a, a keen eye on that as a Scot, albeit disappointing in the end. But England, they go through top seeds. They've gone quietly about their business, winning all three games, going through as top seed into the semi-finals. And you'd look at the depth and quality within their side and the men that they have coming back, led by Ben Curry. They've got Marcus Smith, who's had a breakthrough season at Harlequins and the senior England squad. They are the side who are going in with a lot of momentum and a lot of quality. Pool B was probably the most exciting pool, and how good was Italy this year? Yeah, let's not forget, Italy were relegated. It's the first time ever they've won two of their three games. My goodness, haven't they developed? Their win against Scotland in the round one set the tone. They came back, killer blow at the end to win that match, and they've kicked on, beating Argentina in match day three. And Conor O'Shea must be licking his lips at some of the players that are coming through that system. Don't forget about Georgia as well you know, their first ever win in pool play. And they, like Italy, had about seven or eight players back from last year. And I think that that's what teams are doing now, is that they're starting to develop guys at a younger age, bringing them back into this experience. And, well, what can you say about Gila Aprizadze that hasn't been said already? Let's get back to England, though. They topped Pool B. They're flying into the semis as top seed. They've got the power, the power up front and the pace and execution behind the scrum. Gabriel Ibitoye, what a finisher he is. They've got Marcus Smith at 10, pulling the strings, or James Grayson as an alternative. For me, they're nailed on for a final berth, and I cannot see beyond an England-New Zealand final. Well, I think you're in cuckoo land, and maybe up here on the roof, it's a little bit too high for you. And you've been a former <laughs> international player. You know that South Africa never play two bad games in a row. So they've got their bad one out of the way. They won't be threatened by England. And I think that you mentioned it earlier that they've gone about their work. South Africa are hurting and there's no worse enemy or more dangerous animal in the world than a wounded springbok. OK, Willie, coffee club done. Bit of commentary prep, budgie smugglers on, let's get down to the La Plage and have a little duke. Perfect weather for it, mate. You can wear the budgie smugglers. I'm a shorts man. OK, remember, guys, keep an eye on the World Rugby Twitter, Facebook and Instagram accounts at World Rugby. And don't forget the hashtag, World Rugby U20s. Bon chance to all the teams going into semi-finals week. We'll see you next time.